נועם שרעבי and אלון פוטרמן with כפר עזה טוק. I'm Noam Sharabi, a member of Kibbutz Kfar Aza. And I'm Alon Futterman, director of the Kfar Aza Foundation. Welcome to Kfar Aza Talk, where we'll be meeting with the young adults of the community in order to discuss life since the massacre of October 7th in Israel. All eyes are on the young adults of this community. Many see them as the future leadership, as a source of resilience, and even as a compass that the seniors wish to follow in order to promise the unity of as many as possible. Today, we mark 276 days since the attack and since 240 Israelis were taken into captivity in Gaza. Thankfully, many have returned since. However, there are still 120 in there, including five members of our community, Keith Siegel, Emily Damari, Doron Steinbecher, and Gali and Ziv Berman. Our hearts go out to them, and we continue to pray for their safe return home. On this morning's show, we'll be talking to two young adults from the community, Shachar Ettinger and Rotem Koren. Both have just returned from a delegation to Los Angeles, where they spoke in front of thousands of people about their personal, familiar, and communal challenges. As well as others, they too have embarked an unbelievable journey since evacuated out of Kfar Aza under fire, and today they are here in order to share experiences and thoughts about the future. Shachar and Rotem, welcome. Nice to meet you. It's nice Thank to you. have you with us today. It's an honor to be here today. I'm looking at the t-shirts that you guys are wearing. Can you tell us about them? And Shachar, on, on your shirt it says Gali yeah, and Zivi. And Rotem, on your shirt it says Emily. Yeah. So please tell us yeah. about it. We, we try to support the family and we try to show all over the world and also like specifically in Israel that we are supporting our community and not only people from kibbutz know the names and the people also people that out from the kibbutz so we make shirts with the uh, personal names on the front and something like that symbol their names they're like Ophi. Char- your character, character. Yeah. yeah so if i understand correctly this is an initiative that is led by the young adults of kvar yeah. aza in order to raise awareness for those who are still in captivity. Yeah. yeah. Right? Absolutely. So on your shirt it says Emily for Emily Damari, yeah. and on your shirt it yeah. says Gali and Zivi for Gali and Zivi Berman. Right? Yeah. And if people want to buy these shirts, where can they find them? So we have website, and also we have like uh, physically places or like shop that you can buy there. And So what do people have to Google in order to find the so website? They, they need to write uh, BTH Kfaraza. B-T-H B-T-H Kfar Aza okay. with two Z and then they can see catalog with hats, shirts, any shirts to any person and everything like right there, where is the, all the revenue goes, our activities. and But the most important thing about the shirts is that I, I try to do something like very authentic because when you do something authentic and make people get empathy to person, it's helped to to grow and to to keep all the all the information and tell me where do all the profits go the income from selling the shirts so where does that go all the income go to the families uh, of the hostages. families of the hostages yeah. okay. um, but we also want to keep it until they like return and want to to earn more money to help them to rebuild their life when they will return and we hope that this project will end like soon as possible amen yes amen well thank you for sharing with us this very important initiative uh and we would like to start a conversation with you we would like our listeners around the world to learn about the young adults of kfar aza we have many friends and supporters of the community that are asking constantly what can they do in order to help and we realize that this show is a great opportunity for people who are asking to learn more about people like yourselves, your family, your friends, what you're going through. And our first question for today, if you don't mind sharing with us, is where do you and your family live today? We know that you're not in Kfar Aza. No one can live in Kfar Aza. So where are you? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'll start. Uh, so I'm Shacha, um, originally from Kfar Aza. Uh, now in the last two years, uh, I lived in Tel Aviv with a few friends from Kfar Aza. Uh, we live uh, together in an apartment. Shachar, how old are you? I'm 26. 26. Yeah. So 
Uh, I've been in Kfar Aza uh, in the 7th of October. Um, and since then, I'm moving uh, from place to place, uh, trying to, to rebuild uh, what I uh, achieved in my last apartment. Um, mostly the, the feeling of home uh, that missing. Um, so now I'm, I'm in Tel Aviv and my parents are both uh, in Herzliya. Um, they live in uh, an apartment that uh, meant for, uh, for students. Um, also, um, like half of the time there, I lived with them. Um, so you can see it's not uh, like regular home and regular uh, life that, uh, that they have. Uh, it's smaller. It's yeah, supposed to be for college and students and yeah. not for a family. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, it's tough, it's small, it's uh, very, uh, it's not comfortable. So when your parents and yourself were evacuated from Kfar Aza on October 7th, by the way, did you get out on October 7th or October 8th? On, on October 8th. 8th. So when yeah. you were evacuated on October 8th, did you go straight to the dorms of uh, Reichman University, yeah. the IDC Ertelia? No, so... When we evacuated from Faraza, um, we lived like, uh, I think, two months uh, in an apartment in Herzliya that uh, we got from some connections. Uh, people just gave us uh, the apartment for free until we uh, get our stuff back and uh, like stand on, stand on our own legs. Um, and then they moved to, to to this apartment that uh, they are now living in. So a family, the Ettinger family that is usually in the south, yeah. is now in the center of the country. Your yeah. parents, yeah. they're living the in a student dorm, right? Student yeah. dorms in Eritalia, and you're renting an apartment in Tel yeah. Aviv. Also, both of my sisters on Tel Aviv and Ra'anana. Um, yeah, so we're all uh, close now, but uh, not uh, from good... Uh, you created a home yeah. away from home. Yeah, not and from it, good reasons. Does it feel like home or does it feel like it's temporary? Um, I think for your parents, for sure, it's, uh, it's temporary. Um, Why? Why do you say for sure? Because they don't want to live in, uh, in the city, especially not in the center uh, of Israel. They want... Uh, the traffic is too much. Yeah, the traffic is too much, mm-hmm. yeah. They want to live in silence in uh, some, uh, some place that uh, will uh, go out and... Uh, not hear uh, a lot of noise and uh, yeah they it sounds like they want to be pioneers that move yeah. to the south and live in a yeah. quiet and pleasant place yeah, and yeah. less city noise thank you for yeah. for sharing with us Rotem, where do you live today so like shahar said um i'm also live now in uh, in some hotel that a lot of the youngest people from kfar so that they don't have apartment or something like that or some solution live there uh, my parents, like uh, Shachar parents, live in the dorms of uh, Reichman University. Um, like Shachar said, I think it's very difficult moment because I think the, the home in kibbutz it's more than like four walls. It's it's all the the, the like the mindset, the air, the the grass, the value. So it's something that very missed for me because. Every time that I return to the kibbutz, I get a lot of energy to keep forward, to keep moving, to to try to be better, to try to be without pressure. And I think it's also effect about all my family because m- my family is everything. My parents is everything for my brothers, from for everyone. And every like two weeks we go there, we celebrate, we sitting, we relax, and it's it's. It's like a big hall that we miss it. So let's zoom out for a second so all of our listeners can follow. Most of the people from Kfar Aza were relocated to a kibbutz in the center of the country called Shfa'im. It's north of Tel Aviv and south of Netanya. There's a hotel there. And basically since October, there are families that are living in single hotel rooms. Entire families living inside single hotel rooms. Now there are other families... They're living in the area. They had a different living arrangement, right? Like the dorms of IDC Reichman Herzliya. 
And so they're close to the community, but they're not physically located in Shfaim. And both of your parents, and I think, Noam, your parents are also in the area, right? They're not yeah. in Shfaim as well. So we have three families from Kfar Aza uh, that have their children here representing them. Um, and they are not in Shfaim, but they're close to Shfaim. And Rotem, you mentioned that you're renting an apartment in Tel Aviv. Noam, where are you living? So I am living with my family in Netanya. Noam is living in Netanya. And Rotem, where are you living? In the Port uh, Hotel. The Port Hotel in Tel Aviv. Yeah. So what does your day look like after October 7th? Uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a tough question uh, because it's changed so much time. Um, I think I... I will talk to myself. The community that we have um, is giving us uh, so much strength and uh, and we can see the resilience uh, of the community. And uh, I speak for, for myself. As I said, uh, that my friends and my family giving me the powers to 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 get on my feet and, uh, and be in this routine. Yeah, before we move to Rotem, I just want to say that I definitely relate to what you're saying. I think in a way, for a lot of people, October 7th came and went, but we're still like living that day again and again, just knowing that Gali, Ziv, Emily, Doron, and Kid, they're still there. And so it's really hard to form any kind of routine knowing that they need us and they need us to be their voice. So it's really hard to just like continue with our normal lives. Yeah, I will add that we need to to deal also with like I have two best friends that uh, that died or murdered, uh, and we need to to combine it with the f- with the best friends like Kali and Ziv that are kidnapped now. So, and uh, even not uh, including my own story in in this whole thing, the the trauma is so big and uh, and uh, still. We still really live in the 7th of October. Jahar, if you don't mind me asking, how do you balance all the hard feelings and dealing with such a, a, a tough reality with life? I mean, th- there's bad, and then if you want to balance that with the bad that you can't resolve, you have to create good as well. Yeah. Are you creating good for yourself? Do you um, feel that it's challenging to create... A, a, a time out time yeah. to get a beer get a cup of coffee so, meet friends is it weird to do it or is it important to do it yeah so I'll start by saying uh, that uh, I feel like I have two two lives now the life that I have since the 7th of October and uh, with all of th- my story the the hostage situation and the friends that they are dead um, and I keep it like in a place that uh, will not affect on my other life that this is the routine, the study, the the work, um, hang out. Um, I don't do it uh, often, but uh, I think we need to to do it uh, to stay uh, like to stay calm. Um, and I really think that it's not it's not the same life. Um, so I'm trying to put it uh, like on the side when I'm when I'm in my routine, and uh, and I think we learned how to do it, and it will not affect on the things that we need to do now. Um, so I don't have like a special solution, but I think uh, I. I really hide my feelings um, in my uh, in my normal day. So, you are both students, like you said. What made you decide to go on a plane, stop your life, and just go on this delegation? It's not just going on a plane. It's a 16-hour flight yeah. from Israel to it's Los Angeles. Easy. That's quite a flight. Yeah, I sit, right? I I sit next to the bathroom. So. <laughs> 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 it's terrible. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, I think for me the the best thing uh, to do right now, and the thing that have the most uh, good effect on my life, is when I take active place 
uh, for the kibbutz and mm-hmm. for, uh, for my friends that uh, are now uh, hostages. Um, yeah, and, and I think this is the most important thing to do right now. Like the study, are we able to, yeah. I don't know. Do um, it later. Yeah, we'll manage yeah. To, to, to deal with it uh, somehow. So like Shachar said, I, um, I think first of all, it's difficult. It's difficult to combine between these two things because we study a lot and our study is it's not like regular. But for me, my purpose, the, the, the thing that make me like wake up every morning, And to be better person is to is to help to to my best friends and the family of my friends and my parents and for me like to to get some good grade uh, or something like that it's it's not a matter for me it's more important to go to US and to send like Emily brothers or Gal and Zivi brothers like some random people that take picture with their shirts of the names and when they like you A little bit smile from the situation for me it's everything 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 because like I said in kibbutz everyone is intertwined and for me when I, I'm I'm man of men's like it's slang in Hebrew and if someone next to me that is suffer more than me and if I can help him to be like more positive more happy I would do everything to achieve these goals but this is our mindset I think I most of the youngest people they do active actions uh, this is like what motivate them to act and for me it's the, like the most important thing I guess this is also an opportunity to tell our listeners that we have over 300 people from Faraza that have signed up for storytelling workshops in English that the foundation is providing so additional people who oh. want to share their stories who want to tell their stories and Uh, testimonies from and of October 7th uh, could do so when invited. So if you are part of a group of any kind, a synagogue, a church, and would like to have people from Faraza come your way and create a specific program that can help this community overcome barriers, please reach out to us. Um, let's take a minute and talk about the future. Okay? I think it's, it's an important part of, of this conversation. The community... We'll soon be moving to a temporary living location in the south. Supposedly, they're going to start moving at the end of the summer, beginning of the fall of 2024. Okay, that means that they've moved under fire from Kfar Aza to Shfaim, and then from Shfaim sometimes to the dorms in Herzliya or stayed in Shfaim. But as of the fall of 2024, Kfar Aza will be relocating as a community to assuming that people chose to do so, to a trailer site, okay, what we call a carol villa, like a caravan. It's a big caravan, and everyone is going to be living there together as a community for the next two years or so until Kfar Aza reopens. Now, this situation is tearing families apart, okay? Some want to stay with the community, regardless of the challenges of living on a site that doesn't exist and Is now under construction and some want to have a better a better living arrangement for the next two years and that's understandable um, I'm wondering what did Shabbat dinner what did the Shabbat dinner discourse in your family look like before making that decision there was the deadline for signing the contract and telling the world what you decided to do moving down south of the community or going on your own you individual track for two years so what did the Shabbat dinner before signing that contract look like in your families so I think in Korean family it was before Shabbat dinner because I make the decision that they don't move there because like I said my family is everything our power our power it's when we are together and if my family like move to the the area that the most of the community move <coughs> I will stay separate from my family and this is my power so it was without any decision that we need to stay together uh, when I am in the near to Tel Aviv my brother in Herzliya and 
אז זהו, אין שבדינה I start to convince him to... To go back to cooking. To cooking. <laughs> Re-cook. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically told your parents, mom, dad, yeah, you're no. not moving. No, no, no. How did they react to that? What, did, did they just immediately say yes? Okay? I think after the 7th of October, what happened, it's like the, the youngest replaced the oldest. Wow, um, that's an interesting take. They yeah. take, like, take the decision, take the activities, and... Um, And it was very easy for me because like my the, the biggest love of my parents it's their children and it's their children so I know your parents it's yeah. their grandchildren they don't yeah, the, the grandchild <laughs> but my mother it's a little bit different from my father but seriously if they need to choose between to be far away from us in these bad times that we need to be together it's easy choice mm-hmm. but it's more easy It's more difficult when like your family it's like separate and and they don't have like the power to decision because most of the community are confused and I and I understand the situation you move in like the craziest moment in situation that I think the country have true and you need to, to get like really big decision in in like very first time. So you basically said to your parents, if some of us are in the center, you stay here next to you us, st- yeah. right? And then the discussion about returning yeah, in the when, future, when we'll Kfaraza, have it one day. When right, Kfaraza we'll opened their comes. gate, the, um, and I hope it will happen. We'll cross that bridge uh, yeah, in the future. We, we, yeah, right? yeah. But for now, we stay together in yes. the center. And so, wait, Shacha, what about you? Yeah. Um, so my family, um, I think we're... The, the kids uh, were adult already so I think uh, our decision is uh, is separate from my, my for my parents decision and uh, because we have our own, our own uh, separate lives and uh, we have different things that we need to do right now um, but my parents uh, decided to to move with the community um, and for me I think, that their decision uh, is good uh, if they're if they're happy with it um, like I think that uh, no, not both of them <laughs> like most uh, my mother is uh, is is she wants to to stay with the community my father uh, I mean, not tell uh, things... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> family uh, secrets. Yeah, That's family exactly secret. the point. Just the, yeah. You know, the and discussion between the two of, two of our parents. Yeah, and it's I tough agree. decision. I it's very reflective of yeah. a lot of the families that I know as well. There's yeah. not one answer for all. Yeah. Even when within families, there are people who think, you know, continue with the community regardless of where yeah. the community goes, and others within the same family unit that are saying, not now. Yeah. Now we take care of ourselves yeah. and we'll deal with the Kfar Aza question and returning home, yes or no, when time comes. Yeah. For sure, you need to do some sacrifices in your life. Yes. And, uh, and it's tough because all of us had, had our lives, like my parents had their lives. They didn't need to, to even thought about it. Uh, and now they need to, to think about moving and uh, like they need to, to do big sacrifices. And, uh, and it's tough. Noam, what about your family? So I think my parents are somewhere in the middle between uh, Rotem's and Shacha's parents. Um, if you ask my dad, then he can just like right now move back to Kfar Aza. You know, who needs electricity? Who needs windows? I don't know. Um, but my mom is very scared. Yeah, to be very honest, she's, she's scared and rightfully so. So... They, w- they thought about it and we had a lot of discussions about it, but they have decided to go to the south, move to the south, but not to Urkhama. And they're going to rent a house in a nearby Moshav. And if you ask my dad, then he views, his, he views it as, okay, let's just cut clean, take a break. And after two years, we can think about going back to Kfar Azam. And my mom is just like, you know, 
she needs uh, some time away uh, from, I wouldn't say from the community because she she needs to, she belongs to this community, um, but a little time to, to think about things and think about the future. I think like Shahar said, I mean, they, they already found their, their safe haven, right? And now in the middle of their lives, they need to make some life altering decisions and they never thought that they're gonna need to do that and not on such a big scale. So it's very, very interesting it's three very different people three different stories yeah. uh, I think it is also important to share uh, that in Kfar Aza over 60% of the families decided to move to Uchama to move to this temporary living location in the south which is something that I give the community a lot of credit for uh, not God forbid saying something uh, negative about those that chose not to uh, uh, move with the community because we know that everyone is figuring out another question, and that is, how do we stay part of the community, even if for the next two years we're not going to be living in Uchama? So, like Noah mentioned, for some families, it's renting an apartment next to Uchama to be near. And for others, it's being part of activities and programs that allow them to have that ongoing connection. We're in a very weird reality where there's no wrong answer, right? There's not a right thing to do and a wrong thing to do. It's a lot of figuring out. How do we stay part of this community that is called Kfalaza, even if we're not in Kfalaza? And, and that's an unfortunate reality, but that's reality. So I can, it's like a funny compare or example. I think it's like in football team, you have the players, but you have the fans that like their effective is, it's sometimes more than the players because they support, they buy the tickets, they make the the, the, the team like start and and like keep forward and i think in this situation because it's tough situation tough decision you need to respect all decision that the community take and mm -hmm. if you have some families that don't want to move to to the place the the caravilla will like build they also support by activities because we are connect our connect is it's stronger than like a couple of uh, miles or something like that and i think you can see it also in the youngest people that are they were students before the 7th of October and we live like in, in Tel Aviv or something like that. We support and do some action for the kibbutz every week. Like every week, every time we feel and I think that the kibbutz feel the same, that we are part of the community even if we like not live there in every day. Um, so I think this is the solution and I think this is what will happen because in Kfaraza we have like a lot of special people and good roots and strong roots that help to this community to rebuild themselves um, and and it's not matter if it will be like in the same place for the two mm -hmm. the the first two years I think they motivate to keep this community strong and together this is what help to to achieve these goals mm -hmm. I say that for me, and I think for most of the people of Kfaraza, uh, Kfaraza is our home. And it doesn't matter yes. if it's with the community or without. Uh, the feeling of being part of Kfaraza, for me, is everything. And uh, that's why I do some activities and, uh, and want to help uh, the community and the kibbutz and the hostages. But I think everyone uh, that living in Faraza feel this way. So when we're talking about Ruhama, we were talking about our parents. And it was kind of obvious, we, we didn't mention it, that we ourselves are not moving because we already are leaving like our parents' house and starting our own lives. But when I ask you, how do you see, what do you envision for Faraza? What do you see as Faraza's future in 10 years? What, what do you imagine? So... In my way, I don't try to imagine things. I want to do things that mm -hmm. make it happen. And in a lot of conversation that I have, like in with the country or people that like have the, the like the owner about how the kibbutz will will be, not from the kibbutz management, but from the country. So it's very important for me to tell them that if they want that the kibbutz will be like he was. They need to to take care to the youngest people because if you want like big tree and strong tree, you need to take care in the best way in the high 
equality to the roots and I think that we need to we like as community is people need to to help to the youngest to get hope to return to Kfaraza because this is I think the, the most important thing to help to the kibbutz to to be like the best kibbutz and area in more 10 years and um, if it's education construction like work mindset um, everything um, I definitely agree with you but how do we so for example you're from the young generation right okay how do we make it so that you would want to go back to Kfaraza? okay mm-hmm. I moved to IDC University because I want to 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 handle with the best people in the country like the smartest the, the people that they have like the a good commercial for IDC yeah. Yeah, no no <laughs> they have like the big base like they they bring they came with with family with a lot of money and it make you to fight or flight like I said and it's helped me to be like the best people the best the best the best of me um, and I think that we need to do it also in the south like Sapire college to, to replace it to like high high quality in your university mm-hmm. also like the job there I think you can find some okay jobs but you must to upgrade it to like the biggest office and um, It's difficult to do it but we must to do it we must to replace we must to be like winners and we must to, to to think in big way because the south is it's my home it's my place I get all my value from this place and I mm-hmm. think that if I now I'm I'm the best like I The best version, version of, of myself so a lot of youngest people can do also but they need hope they need hope and they need place that show them like it's fine you, you like you born kibbutz we know like the border it's a little bit small but it's happened it can happen you can achieve everything that you want so you're saying dream big upgrade the whole area not just Faza and just like give us hope and I think the area that you born and the area that bring you the value and the the way to succeed need to be like the best and okay. I don't think now I, I think that now we have like the best opportunity to do it yes. to upgrade everything 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 what do you say Shaha um, first of all um, I think it's it's hard to to imagine uh, the life that we live um, until all of the hostage situation are happening and And uh, for me, I cannot even start to, to imagine. Um, and that's, that's a tough question because I really don't know what will happen in 10 years. I hope um, that we will uh, rebuild the kibbutz to be as successful as it was. Um, I don't know if it, uh, if it will happen because we lost so much friends uh, of the community. Um, but I also think that uh, the, un- the younger generation need to, to be in the front uh, mm-hmm. of the activity of rebuild the kibbutz. And I hope that, uh, that the kibbutz will be good, good and safe place uh, yeah. for safe. all of us to live, yeah, especially yeah. safe. Friends, I want to thank you for joining us today. This was a very special first episode for us, and we're happy that you were our first guests. Uh, it's an opportunity to thank Noam for co-hosting this show with me as well. Thank to you. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, I'm going to seize you. this opportunity to also thank some other people that are here with us, and they've been with us since October. So we have so many supporters here. That through the Kfar Aza Foundation are supporting initiatives in education and welfare, mental health, community programs, commemoration, and now we're even rebuilding. So thank you to all of you that are reaching out and asking how you can help, how you can donate. Google us. We're at uh, Kfar Aza is not alone on the Internet. Uh, and all 
donations are obviously tax deductible in your countries as well. So thank you for those who have already helped. Thank you for those who have joined us today. Thank you for those who will be helping us thanks to this opportunity that we've created here together. Uh, we look forward to additional conversations with additional members of the Young Adults of Faraza. And we opened with a prayer that we're going to end with as well. And that is that all people that are in captivity return home safe as soon as possible. We're going to do everything that we can in order for that to happen. Toda Rabbah.